Good morning, y'all. We are back out here today on the bridge. Got a lot of pilings through here, a lot of structure around those pilings, but we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We are targeting sheep's head, but we're gonna target them on artificial. The artificial that I'm using today is this crank of crab right here. And this is the first time with me using this crab. This is their mud crab version. It's got a little glowing eyes right there. It's kind of the same concept, just a little bit of a different color pattern. And I'm really interested to see if this is gonna work to catch these sheep's head. I have caught a lot of sheep's head on artificial, but never this one. So let's get in here, see if we can catch them. So this crab has a lot of really cool features. I will talk about them a little bit later on in the video. Let's just see something that's tearing bait up over there. Ah, man, looks like trout. <laughs> Anyways, let's see if we can get bit on the old crab. Got him. Mm, I was just real, oh, oh, buddy, that might be a good one. Dang, I was just reeling it back in and got smoked. Come here. What do we got? What do we got? Looking for it to be a sheep's head, but that was a weird bite. That was a really weird bite for it to be a sheep's head. Dang, I was just reeling in my slack to make another cast and he smoked it. Ah, oh, it's a catfish. It's a catfish. All right, buddy. You fooled me. Slime my line and everything. That ain't the way I wanted to start with the old crab. All right, let's get this guy off and try again. All right, back after it. Come on. Got him. There we go. Get off the bridge. No, 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 no. No, 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 it's feeling like a sheep said he's got me on the bridge. Uh-oh. Don't let me lose my cranker crab. There we go. Got them out in the open now. Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna kind of steer myself out away from the bridge real quick. Scoop this guy up. All right, that right there is our first sheep's head of the morning on the cranker crab. Not a giant, but a good start. All right, and there she is, y'all. Just a little fella, probably sitting around 15 inches or so. Go ahead and get this cranker crab out of its mouth. There's definitely sheep's head on this bridge. And we do know that they will eat this crab lure. Now, if we can get some big ones, that's gonna tell the tale. Such beautiful, beautiful fish. One of my favorite fish to target. And we will see you next time, buddy. Get bigger, bye bye. We are keeping today, we're gonna keep a couple. But the ones that I'm gonna look at keeping are gonna be probably in that 18 inch range or bigger. Y'all check this out right here. That is how dangerous that was. I mean, my line is all frayed up. And these are very, very expensive lures. And that was a small sheep's head. So had it been a really big one, I probably would have lost 20 bucks right there because that's about what that guy cost. I just retied on a fresh leader. Get back here on the bridge, see if we can get sheep's head number two. Got him. Got him on the drop. Come here. Feeling like another sheep's head. Got the right head pumps. Get up. Yeah. I think that's a better one, too. A little bit. There we go. Sheep's head number two. Getting pulled back into the bridge here. I think that one might make the box, y'all. Come on. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Boom! All right. <laughs> Look at that guy. That is every bit of a, at least an 18 incher. He didn't seem to me like he pulled as hard as that last one I caught. All right, well that's sheep's head number two for the cranker crab right here. We'll go ahead and pop this guy in the box. 
All right, so y'all check this lure out right here. So I already told y'all, this is the Cranker Crab. I don't remember the exact size, but it's the smallest one that they offer on their website. Uh, they're like $15, $17 a piece. They come from Australia. So with shipping, I ended up getting two of these and it was like $42. So very expensive crab like lures, but if fiddler crabs and other things are hard to find, this apparently is a really good option uh, to use to go in there and catch sheep's head. We haven't been at it long at all. We've already put two in a box. Uh, but is it an extremely lifelike looking crab? You got all these little, you know, legs coming off of it right there, which seem to be holding up pretty good. And then on the claw, you got this sponge material, right? So what's happening is that crab is settling down on the bottom and we got a good current moving through here. Well, that current is causing them claws to kind of stick up, move around in the current. And uh, that's when those crabs are biting. I'll kind of show y'all how I'm working it here in just a second. Really what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of, that's a horrible cast, but just kind of throwing it along the piling. We're in about five foot of water, six foot of water, be exact right here. See one just bit it on the way down. Boom, just like that. Didn't even have to work it. Just dropped it along the pylon like it was a fiddler crab. And I think we've hooked us another one. Yep, another good one. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, you pretty much work this just like a fiddler crab, just dropping it beside the pylon. You really don't even gotta twitch it. Come here. Very, very next cast. And we hooked us another good one, y'all. We are on them now. That one's bigger than the last one. And y'all look at that. These lures work extremely well. I am impressed with them for sure. It's another one for the box, y'all. All right, y'all, so we are on some fish. That is our third sheep's head in about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, but check it out. We're out here using these lures. I have a ton of content coming y'all's way using all sorts of lures that you've probably never seen before. I know people don't typically target these sheep's head with artificials, but if y'all would do me a favor and hit that subscribe button to make sure y'all get to see that future content. I have a ton of awesome sheep's head content coming y'all's way this year. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, we're gonna get back on this bridge, see if we can find another one. Right, let's see if we can go three for three on cast. Just dropping it beside the piling right there. That current started to pick up. The wind has picked up for sure. It was slick this morning. He's on, he's on, not even having to do anything get around the pilot don't let me lose my lure no there we go get off of there get off come here it's insane works just like a fiddler crab oh that's a good one that's a good one Come here, give him a net. That's a good fish. Yeah, that's a stud. Come here. Whew. Oh, I gotta get him up. Yeah, all right. Look at that one. Whoo. That wind and current is just slinging me into that bridge, but that is a stud. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a fish. Let's go, y'all. Whoo, he had me in that bridge for just a minute. I got some frayed line right there. Swap that leader out. So scared to lose this lure out here around these bridges but that's the name of the game when you're sheep's head fishing you're gonna lose some tackle for sure we just don't want to lose 20 dollar lures look at that one what a beautiful beautiful fish all right that one's definitely going in the box 
we'll take this one to the house and whip up something nice for y'all at the end of the video we'll do a little catch and cook show y'all how i like to cook these big sheep's head another thing is these hooks that are on these cranker crabs they're really really tiny hooks and they pierce these sheep's head mouths perfectly you don't lose a whole lot of fish typically when you hook them you hook them good and another beautiful fish for the box let's drop back down can we go four for four there he is got him oh oh whoo i thought that one got my crab <laughs> man they are fired up right now around this piling I've been hitting the same section right here, y'all, and they're just on it as soon as it drops down. I definitely thought I would have to put a little action into this lure. I didn't think I would just be dropping it beside these pylons and getting bit the way I am. He's biting it. Got him. Got him. Mm. Oh, lost another one. <laughs> I was just talking earlier about how you don't lose many, and we've lost two in a row. That's what I get for talking about it, I guess. There he goes. Got him. Got him. Come here. Come here. Yeah, that's another decent one, I believe. Oh, come on around. Come here another sheep's head it is insane y'all i'm almost gonna go on record and say that these things might work better than fiddler crabs and i'll explain that in just a minute yeah there it is another one for the box go ahead and get the old cranker crab out of you real quick so much fun y'all so much fun i haven't even swapped out my battery on my gopro yet and we're already putting our sixth or seventh fish in the box here so i think these are better than fiddler crabs for one main reason so um sheep's head are visual feeders right they have incredible eyesight as well as they got a good nose they can smell things out pretty good now i did not add any scent to this at all but here's the thing when I drop this down there, that current is keeping those claws moving. And those sheep's head are looking for anything around these pylons that are moving, right? And oftentimes when you hook a fiddler crab, once you drop them down there, they really don't move a whole lot. It kind of looks like a rock dropping down there. Every once in a while you'll get a good lively one and they'll still move their claws and stuff like that. But this crab right here continues to move no matter what. That current's down there, those claws are moving, and those sheep's head are really keying in on it. Well, I don't know what happened, but the bite just shut down out of nowhere, y'all. I have not had a bite in about 30 minutes uh, on this cranker crab. But real quick, uh, I'd like to know from y'all, y'all comment below, is this something y'all would use given the price point there like i said shipped to you they're about 20 dollars a piece you can get a lot of fiddler crabs for that amount of money but sometimes fiddler crabs are hard to find and then also like myself i would prefer to catch fish on artificial lures any day of the week uh so you know if i can use artificial lure trick a fish into biting something that he's uh that, that's not there you know um, that's the way I'd like to go. But I'd like to hear from y'all. Comment below, is this something that y'all would use to target sheep's head? All right, and then before we get out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all the setup that I was using today. So the rod that I'm using is a Chubby Rods 7.2 medium fast action. This is probably the best rod on the planet for 130 bucks. 100% made in America with American components. I cannot brag enough about these rods they are my favorite um, and they come in at around 130 bucks uh, but the reel that I was using was a Shimano Stratic 2500 and then I got that paired up with 15 pound braided mainline to 20 pound fluorocarbon leader 
Most of the time I'll go lighter with 10 or 15 pound fluorocarbon leader, but I was really nervous about lo losing my crabs today. So I wanted to use a little bit heavier leader and I'm probably glad that I did because there were a couple of times that we rubbed up against that bridge that I feel like we were really close to uh to losing that lure but yeah i will link these cranker crabs down in the description if y'all do want to check them out i'm not affiliated with them in any kind of way i just thought it was an interesting lure uh to come out here and target these sheep's head with all right y'all we are out here on the back porch now getting ready to whip up an amazing sheep's head dish this is probably one that y'all have not seen done before and it's a good one it is one that my family uh loves but kind of show y'all what we got going on here so I already got my sheep's head filleted up. I did use my sword nine inch fillet knife for that. These are the best fillet knives on the planet. Uh, if y'all wanna purchase one, I got a link down in the description. Amazing fillet knives. But yeah, we just got our fish already cleaned up, filleted right there. And got a little bit of some flour, some panko, lemon, egg wash, garlic. And then the season we're gonna be using is Spanglish Asadero Surf and Turf amazing stuff and then yeah the only thing not pictured in the kitchen i have some noodles going uh so we're gonna be building kind of like a little pasta dish uh and the noodles that i'm using are egg noodles so just got them going on in the kitchen but yeah without further ado let's dive in and uh show y'all how this comes together the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get our burner going out here outside and go ahead and get our oil going. We want our oil to reach 350 degrees. Yeah, just like that. Got that going on high. Oil I'm using is gonna be vegetable oil. And I'm just gonna put enough in there to submerge that fish. That should be about good right there. And we're looking for that oil to get up to about 350, 360. All right, so we got our oil going. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and work on getting our fish ready. So uh, we just got our fillets right here. We're gonna go ahead and put them in the flour. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and season our flour. And this is where our surf and turf blend comes together. Uh, now, since this is a pasta, a pasta dish and we're gonna kind of be building a lemon butter garlic sauce for that, I don't really want a Cajun kick to it, which is why I'm opting for this more of a herby type um, seasoning. And yeah, I use this a lot, a lot on my fish when I'm doing pasta dishes and stuff like that. So got a decent amount in there with the flour. We're just gonna toss this around, get it nice and blended in. Just like that. All right, and then to that, all we're gonna do is go ahead and dump our fish in there. And we're just gonna toss that fish in that flour, making sure we get every inch of it nice and coated. And from there, we'll be taking some tongs. And we're gonna go ahead and coat it in the egg wash. Do a nice little flip. Make sure that egg gets nice and all over that filet. And then from there, we're gonna put that into some seasoned panko crumbs. That panko is what's gonna give it that nice, crispy, crunchy texture. All right, so we got all of our fish now coated in egg. And we just wanna do the same thing like we did with that flour. Make sure we're getting that panko all over that fish filet. Gonna give it that nice seasoned, crunchy texture right there. Now, if you wanted it even crunchier than what we're gonna have it, you can repeat these steps one more time, go back to the egg, back to the flour, back to the egg, and back to the panko, and you're just gonna keep on building that crunch in there, but that is about perfect. That's what we want it to be right there. So, we're just gonna set that aside wait for our oil to get to 360 and uh, yeah we'll be ready to drop these guys in so our oil has reached the desired temperature and we only got four pieces of fish so we're going to attempt to get all four of them in this pan 
should fit no problem. Now you don't want to crowd your pan if you do got a lot of fish. Don't be afraid to do this in batches. There we go. Now we might give it a little flip, but we're just looking for these to turn golden brown. And it shouldn't take long, maybe three to five minutes at most. All right, looking like it's time to give the fish an old flip. That's the color we're looking for right there. Nice, deep, golden, not burnt. These are just about ready. Probably give it maybe, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes on that side. All right, our fish is complete. Oh, look at that. Tell me that sheep says it's not beautiful right there. I'm just going to pull that off on a paper towel. That way some of that grease can kind of drain off of there. And we're just gonna let this rest while we build our sauce. Then we'll be ready to eat. So as y'all see, I got my little pot sitting over this flame real quick. This sauce is super simple. It's gonna come together real easy. I am just gonna use one stick of salted butter. If you have unsalted, feel free to use that. Just add a little extra salt to it. But since this butter is already salted, we're not gonna season it with any salt. So just gonna go in with one whole stick and we're gonna let that melt down a little bit. All right, now we got our butter all the way melted down, but we are looking for it to kind of take on a light brown color. Um, burnt butter just takes on a whole new flavor. It becomes really, really rich and you'll start to smell it when that butter turns brown. It'll kind of have this really sweet pungent smell to it, but that's what we're looking for. All right, so our butter's just about right. I'm gonna go ahead and take the juice from one whole lemon. If we get a little bit of seeds in there, that ain't gonna hurt nothing. Of course, try to keep them out, but it ain't gonna hurt nothing. Get that lemon nice and squeezed down in there. Throw that out there. That's a good lemon. This one's forgiven. Give me the juices. Come on. There we go. Get out of here. I'll tell you what, we're going to add the juice of another lemon. So make that two total lemons. I do like my citrus, especially in fish. It's very rare I'll have a fish dish that doesn't include some sort of lemon, lime, or orange juice. I just feel like fish has to have citrus to kind of balance things out, especially if you're doing like a, a Cajun influenced fish where you're using a lot of Cajun seasoning, which we didn't add any in this one. But using Cajun seasoning, that citrus from a lime or a lemon is just going to balance everything out. So we got the juice of two lemons in there now. Man, that smells good. Just butter and lemon, that's all it is. And it smells amazing. And believe it or not, it's just gonna tie everything together with this pasta and this fish. Now I'm gonna go in with a solid tablespoon of garlic right there. And then we're just gonna continue to mix that around. We don't want to burn our garlic, but we do want that heat to kind of release those oils and infuse it with that butter and that lemon. All right, so here's our noodles right here, our egg noodles. They've been sitting up for about 30 minutes or so. Now, if they were fresh, it'd be a little bit better, but that's the noodles we're using, egg noodles. Take a little bit of this old sheep's head filet. We'll just lay that right on top of it. Then we're gonna ease over here. And we're going to spoon us, y'all look at that, a little bit of that sauce. Make sure to get that sauce on the noodles to rehydrate them. Add a little bit of extra flavor to that. And uh, don't tell the doctor because I'm pretty sure this will raise your cholesterol. But we're going to treat ourselves. Worked hard for this fish right here. Now we get to go enjoy it. All right, y'all, so the moment y'all have all been waiting for, y'all check it out. Look at that. That is just so beautiful. Get my shadow off of it. Yeah. 
Well, only one thing left to do. I'm gonna go ahead, dive in for a bite, let y'all know how it tastes. Y'all already know it's gonna be good. It can't be bad. Yeah. Nice, flaky sheep's head. If you've never eaten sheep's head, you are certainly missing out because it's some of the best, best inshore fish we have readily available to us pretty much all year round, but especially in the winter time. Mm. Y'all, that fish has an amazing crunch, awesome flavor, citrusy, garlicky, buttery. I mean, I gotta go in for another bite. That right there is superb, y'all. Dropping stuff everywhere. That's killer. Absolutely killer. Y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed this video as much as I did filming. I mean, it was an awesome day out there, but I do hope y'all enjoyed it. If y'all would, hit the like button, comment with any questions, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.